The greater Toronto area housing market took another hit last month in June and more buyers took more of a wait and see approach amid rising borrowing rates. According to new data from the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board, total residential transactions are down 41.4% this year in June compared to last year. So how much do you think it can fall as interest rates keep going up? Leave your answer in the comment section below. If you like this type of content, please do me a huge favor and smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell, it'd mean the world to me. All right, so now let's hop over to Treb and check out the market stats quick overview. So if we look at total residential transactions year over year, look at June of last year, there's a total of 11,053 transactions. And June of this year, there's a total of 6,474 transactions. So that's a difference of 4,579 transactions. And we're down 41.4% compared to last year. So I'm going to share with you guys my thoughts and why we're down 41.4%. So ever since I got my real estate license, the summer has always been a slow time you know a lot of people want to travel they want to go to cottages up north um, according to MasterCard Economics Institute's third annual travel report they're saying that an estimated 1.5 billion additional people globally are expected to fly in 2022 compared with last year's report I guess so consumer spending while traveling so travelers are returning the spending on experiences over things uh, travel budgets have shifted towards restaurants, bars, and recreational activities. So I went to Formula One in Montreal last month and it was packed. I've been going to Formula One since like 2013, 2014. I've never seen it so packed. So we're seeing a lot of people that are just going out. They're not really thinking about, you know, buying or selling real estate. They just want to go out and have a good time. So I just want to go over this quickly. So Treb President Kevin Krieger says that home sales have been impacted by both the affordability challenge presented by mortgage rate hikes and the psychological effect where home buyers who can afford higher borrowing costs have put their decision on hold to see where home prices end up. Kruger expects current market conditions to remain in place during the slower summer months, but adds that home prices should stabilize, bringing buyers back into the fold despite high borrowing costs. I agree with Krieger. I think a lot of people are just waiting on the sidelines to see where these prices end up. A lot of people are worried about interest rates going up. You know, there's a policy interest rate announcement happening on July 13th. And by the end of the year, there's actually another three after that. There's one on September 7th, um, October 26th, and then December 7th. But for the July 13th meeting, the rumor is that interest rates may go up by 75 basis points. And that hasn't happened in a really long time. So it's going to be interesting to see you know, how people react after that. But a lot of people that are buying and selling right now that are transacting are people that, you know, maybe need to sell, uh, people that, you know, need something bigger, people that, that want, want to buy something smaller, a lot of people that are actually selling to move closer to work. So those are the type of buyers that, you know, that I see that are transacting right now. But a lot of investors, I think, are just waiting for things to settle. And then we'll start seeing some more investors, you know, invest. But I'm not really dealing with too many investors right now. I think a lot of people, you know, are enjoying themselves they're going away going up north having fun and uh, you know I'm, I'm hoping to see the fall pick up a bit let's take a look at seasonal adjusted so May of this year there's a total of 6,204 transactions and last month in June there's a total of 5,910 transactions so that's a difference of 294 transactions and it's down 4.7 percent compared to the previous month and again I think this will pick up in the fall you know despite the interest rates going up you know it's always been a slower time in the summer all right, so let's take a look at the average selling price year over year. So June of last year was $1,088,991. And June of this year was $1,146,254, which is up 5.3% compared to last year. And if you look at the seasonal adjusted, so May of this year was $1,175,111. And June of this year was $1,139,957, which is down 3% compared to the previous month and that's a total of $35,154. Let's take a look at total new listings year over year. So June of last year was 16,193 and June of this year was 16,347. So it's up 1% compared to last year. And I predict that this will continue to go up and we're going to see more new listings, especially if interest rates keep going up. Okay, so now let's go over the sales to new listings ratio. And I like to look at this because it gives us a good indication if we're in a buyer's market or a seller's market. So the sales to new listings ratio is basically the number of homes sold and the number of unit listings that are entering the market. So in a balanced market, the ratio would be 50%. In, in a seller's market, the ratio would be higher. And in the buyer's market, the, the ratio would be lower. 
So if we look at June of last year, the ratio was 68% and June of this year was 40%. So 40% would imply more of a buyer's market and it's down 28% compared to last year. And I still see this coming down in the future. All right, so now let's take a look at property days on market year over year. So June of last year was 17 days. June of this year was 24 days, which is up 41.2% compared to last year. So listing days on market year over year. So June of last year was 13 days. June of this year was 15 days, which is up 15.4% compared to last year. In my opinion, these numbers are not that bad. You know, I think people are still buying. You just have to price your house right. Use an experienced realtor, not somebody that's doing this part-time. You know, if you have any questions, you need any help, you can contact my team. I'll leave all my info in the description of the video. All right, so now let's check out the total condo apartment sales year over year. So Q1 of 2021, there's a total of 9,399. Q1 of this year was a total of 7,932, which is down 15.6% compared to last year. And the average selling price year over year, so Q1 of 2021 was 645,503. And Q1 of this year was 790,000. 398, which is up 22.4% compared to last year. All right, so now let's check out the total new listings year over year. So if you look at Q1 of last year, there's a total of 11,387. Q1 of this year was 11,426, which is up 0.3% compared to last year. Sales to new listings ratio year over year. So Q1 of last year was 83%. Q1 of this year is 69%, which is still considered a seller's market. And it's down 14% compared to last year. And this one's very interesting, days on market year over year. So Q1 of last year was 23 days. And Q1 of this year, which is performing better, is 12 days. And it's down 47.8% compared to last year. And I think this one's performing better because a lot of people are going back to work. Not a lot of people are working from home like before. And you know, it also could be because gas prices are very high and people want to save money. So they're probably moving closer to work. Now let's go over the condominium rental stacks. So total apartment rentals year over year. So Q1 of last year was 13,162 and Q1 of this year was 10,110. It's down 23.2% compared to last year. Average one bedroom apartment rent so year over year. Q1 of last year was 1,820 and this year was 2,145 which is up 17.9% compared to last year, total new listings year over year. So Q1 of last year was 28,703 and Q1 of this year was 16,475, which is down 42.6% compared to last year. And I think uh, the rentals are performing very well because a lot of people are on the fence. They're waiting to see where these interest rates go and how high they go. And a lot of people and investors and even people that are buying to live are just waiting to see where these prices end up because they want to maybe try to get a better deal. So I think if you have a property that's vacant, now's a great time to rent your property. You know, I've, I've rented a lot of units and properties for my clients the past couple months and you know, we're getting great tenants and renting them for, for top dollar compared to like the previous years. So if you guys like this type of content, please do me a huge favor, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell. It would mean the world to me. Thank you for watching. Adios.